Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when I see so many journalists present, you know, I'm a little bit apprehend, you know, because the big bureaucrat from the United Nations, I don't claim to know everything. I only know something. So I will try my level best to respond to your questions. First question, let me ask myself, I'm sure you have the question in mind, as my colleague already informed you, why you are here? I'm here as conference secretary you know, to finalize the logistic arrangements for the conference. When I have to find that this is my last third mission, and we just concluded the meetings between my UN team and the Brazilian team, we had an excellent dialogue. On many, I really appreciate, and let me take this opportunity first and foremost to express my deep appreciation for the excellent work my Brazilian colleagues have been doing. The effort they put into it is very impressive. The approach, the dedication who they they, with which they devote to their work is also very impressive. Of course, the logistics team is led by my good friend, Lordman, and with the meetings, I'm more confident that we will definitely have a successful conference. And also, as all you know, that logistics are very important. When I use the word logistics, it covers many things. With the security, it covers the conference facilities, it covers the transportation, it covers accommodation, it covers the, the, all the protocols, and, and you know, we're living in an IT period, and we are the host country, in collaboration with UN, we try to make the conference carbon neutral and uh, paper smart conference. So a lot of works, a lot of details we have to attend to. The whole purpose is to make sure that conference will run smoothly and successfully. I keep telling my colleagues, the Brazilian team working in logistics as well as my team, we are, or they are, heroes with our names. And I joked that if we are going to have a successful conference, people will forget us. But if anything goes wrong, they will blame us. Of course, we hope that the second scenario won't happen. That said, I would remind you, the journalists, it's never underestimate the difficulties we have. As you know, and I have been briefed, we estimate that there will be around about 50 to 60,000 people coming. There would be the more than 120 heads of state government coming. This is going to be a huge conference, a historical conference. Let me quote what Secretary General Ban Ki Moon said. The Rio Plus 20 is going to be a conference. Well, be, well, it's going to be, he said not, he said, let me quote, Rio Plus 20 is one of the most important conference in the history of the United Nations. End of quote. And as you know, 
Mr. Ban Ki Moon has been elected for his second term. He has identified five priorities. And the number one priority, priority for him, is Rio Plus 20, the sustained development. So you can imagine how important the conference is. The conference is about future we want. The conference will decide in a way, at least impact in great to greatly the future. The future means what? The sustained development. What is sustainable? It is about the survival of the mankind. So by the time we meet with the so many heads of state government, we, are, we expect them to take decisions which will guide the whole world to travel on the pathway of sustained development. So it is going to be a historical conference, a conference of huge significance, not only for the current generation, but also for generations to come, including those to be born. So I'm very happy that this conference will be held in Rio, in Brazil, the great country, a country which all of you have a reason to be proud of. For the, following, for the very obvious reasons, first and the most important reason is that it is Brazil is a country which is not only very significant for the region, it's a significant for the world. You have huge impact and big say on international affairs. And Brazil has been doing extremely well. Of course, it's always relative in the sustainable development. And by now, I'm sure all of you must be very familiar with what the definition of sustainable development. The sustainable development means the integration of economic development, social development, and environmental protection. The three should be integrated. That is sustained development. It is precisely on this sustained development issue and Brazil has set the examples for all the other countries to follow. Particularly in the last few years, you have been doing extremely well. In terms of economic de development, you are one of the very few who have been developing very fast. In terms of the social development, you have made lots of innovations. And you know better. And the former and the current president of Brazil. And this is relatively, and also, while pursuing the economic and social development, Brazilian government has attached great importance to the environmental protection. That's why I think it can't be better to have Brazil and Rio as the venue for Rio Plus 20. So I'm very happy, I'm pretty confident that with the leadership of Brazil, with the cooperation and partnership of all other stakeholders, we shall have a successful conference. Thank you. Now, the floor is open for any nasty questions. We will, uh, we will circulate the microphone. Gustavo, please. Jenny Barchfield from the Associated Press. I have a question about what the specific challenges in developing the infrastructure for the conference that you mentioned, what are the most sensitive points, and what are being done to resolve those issues? Thank you. Very good question. Good question because 
this is exactly the question in the minds of all of us. What is the challenge? I would say challenge is very big. Let me begin with a small, relatively small challenge, which is not that small. As you know, we are in March. The summit will take place in June. I'll calculate, and less than 100 days. But seriously, we are going to, according to the UN resolution, we are expected to produce, let me quote, a focused political outcome. And we are going to address in addition to other things, two themes. One theme is the green economy. Don't forget, green economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication. This is the full name of the theme. And the second theme is framework, institutional framework for sustainable development. That means mechanism for the implementation of the green economy for short. So the subject of itself is very complicated. When I say complicated, you know, let me allow me to go to a little bit to the history. The meeting is called the Rio Plus 20, because 20 years ago we did have a meeting called Earth Summit, which is a resounding success. 20 years ago, we, the international community ag agreed with a declaration, the adopted declaration, which contained 27 principles. They adopted Agenda 21, which runs hundreds of pages. Now, in the last 20 years, what happened? Of course, we have seen rapid develop, economic development, globalization, all those. We, we have also achieved a huge success. Well, at the same time, you might have noticed the world is getting more and more unsustainable with the climate change with all kind of food, energy, crisis. So, the gap is huge. When I say gap, basically I mean there's a lack of integration. Integration of the three pillars, sustained development. And in addition to that, the, another big, big problem is I would call the most difficult problem is the implementation. We are not short of words. We have principles. We have got to the agenda. And 10 years ago, based on that, <clears throat> in Johannesburg, the international community agreed to have a plan of implementation. They're called Johannesburg Plan of Implementation. Then what happened with all those papers, documents, which are wonderful? Papers are there. We have said enough. But implementation is far behind. So therefore, in my speeches and also many of the member states, we all emphasize the implementation, the action to honor the commitments we made 20 years ago. Make sure what we agreed will take place on the ground. That would lead me to the theme, the green economy. Green economy, let me sure tell you, there is no definition. People have different understanding of that. Because, according to my poor English, 
the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholders. We have 192 member states at a different level of development. Each and every one of them have, has their own priorities. So green economy for them do not, does not mean the same thing. So there's no definition on that, but after one and a half years debate, I sense that there is consensus that we should not spend more time on the definition any definition. And also, as you know, I keep saying this. We had an unfortunate disaster called the September 11, the terrorist action act, event. There is still no definition about international terrorism. Can you believe that? Don't waste time anymore. I'm very happy, and I hope those who still have concerns will not waste too much time on the definition. But since the member states have chosen the subject, green economy, for short, in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication, let's work on that. So, when you ask me the, the difficulty, the problem, the problem is integration, problem is implementation. This is the biggest problem. And also, of course, let me, before I forget, let me say, the coherence, coherence of the institutions at the global level, regional level, national level, and the local government level. We need a sound, healthy institution to implement the sustained development. That's why the second theme, right, as I said earlier. So those two themes are co very complex on their own. I wouldn't say challenges, certainly challenges. They are challenges. But um, as I said earlier, there is near consensus that we will f leave the side of the definition for a while with the understanding that the green economy should not mean trade protectionism. Green economy should not mean the eight conditionalities. Green economy is an instrument, it's a tool which has the potential to bring together, that is, to integrate the economic, social, and environmental development and the social protection. So in the course of operations, member states all agree that under the theme of the green economy for short, there are seven plus priority areas. They are energy, they are second, food and agriculture, third, jobs, employment, and inclusive societies, fourth, Sustainable cities, urbanization. You know. Fifth, water, which means many things. Water for drinking, drinking water, sanitation, water for agriculture, water for industrial development, right? And six, oceans. You know, our Earth, UK, was covered basically by oceans. And we have so many small island developing countries. They're called the blue economy, okay? And then seven, we have disaster, resilience, and mitigation issues. Those are seven. Of course, there are others when I say plus. Of course, the number one issue is sustainable production and consumption of that about there are many others I said seven plus 
So member states have identified those issues as priority issues. And each one of them is complex enough. And we have to reach agreement how to address them. That is barrier number very, very big. And another issue, as I said, institutional framework. Of course, we have, at, uh, earlier I said at international, regional, and national, local government levels, all this. How to make them work together <laughs> in a coherent and manner. This is, is a big issue, big issue. And this is, we have seen a lot of fragmentations, fragmentations. So therefore, this time we're going to discuss it. There have been a lot of problems on a uh, proposal on the table. We're going to address them. Should we, how to, for example, should we establish a sustainable council? Shall we like the Human Rights Council, for example? I'll just give you an example. And how to strengthen the ECOSOC, and you know that? One of the major UN charter bodies. If you, if you decide, they decide, how, should, how can we strengthen the existing institution called Commission on Sustainable Development, which was established 20 years ago in Rio? How to strengthen the General Assembly to consider you know, sustainable development? Particularly, how to strengthen the UNEP, United Nations Environment Program. So all discussions going on, and they're all interrelated. So those are the, I wouldn't say I, difficulties, but those are the issues we have to confront with. And none of them is easier. As I said, we have a, a few less than 100 days ahead, and I think we have only 15 or 20, 15 days, which will be devoted to negotiations, to reach an agreement among 193 countries is a challenge. But we can always turn challenge into opportunities. And we should have that confidence. Now, earlier I mentioned the complexity of the institutional framework. I mentioned about the green economy. I gave you a list of the priority areas where we must address, which we must address and find a solution to them. On this green economy, there are also a list of the proposals. Number one, don't forget, our job is not talking. Our job is working, it's action on the ground. We have talked enough. Don't waste any time in talking, in producing papers only. Of course, we have to produce a paper, but the paper should be action-oriented, and the paper should be implemented, honored. So, another theme of the green economy, we have a couple of proposals. Number one, proposed by EU, European Union, supported by many. For the purpose of implementation, they propose that we should have a green economy roadmap. Because we have had the agenda, we have got the plan of implementation. With now, we need, what we need is a roadmap to reach our objectives. A roadmap? Well, it's very vivid. And you, everybody knows what, what roadmap looks like. Other way of putting it is we need a framework of action with milestones. With milestones. And secondly, in the roadmap, we also need a menu of policy options. When I say policy options, and you understand that options for member states to pick and choose, because countries are different. You cannot have the identical one set of policies applicable to all countries. You cannot ask a small island country 
to implement the policies for the desert countries. That's ridiculous, right? So countries are different. So we should have, they're proposed to have a many of policy options. They're also proposed that to, is that to have, to establish the toolkits which will incorporate all the experiences, lessons and experiences for people to pick and choose the tools. Because between green economy, though we don't have agreement on definition, but don't forget the fact that many countries, and particularly this country we are here in, have been practicing implementing green economy. And like my own country, we have put in our legislation, in our five-year plan, like country like India, like many, including our your neighbor, our, our common neighbor, United States, and many of the European countries, African countries, many countries are working on the green economy. It has a lot of names. Some people call it green economy, others call it green growth, others call it China call it green development. That means the same thing. Okay. So, one proposal on the green economy roadmap or framework for action, if member states could agree, that would be wonderful. Of course, this should be wonderful, voluntary. Secondly, in order to implement the green economy, we need some goals. As we had with the De Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, you all know very well. People call it Sustainable Development Goals. This is a huge proposal. I'm very grateful to the countries who come up with the idea, like Colombia, like Peru. The other one is Guatemala. It's gaining ground. It's getting more and more popular. At least I'm very encouraged to say that I've not heard anyone objects to this idea, proposal. We should have some, should have a set of of sustainable development goals. I will be extremely happy if member states could agree to it. Of course, as you know, in the last few decades, many, many international summit meetings were held. They have reached many agreements. We call them internationally agreed development goals, including MDGs. Then, how many goals we should have? Difficult to say. But there is agreement that if there is any goal, it should cover the seven plus priority areas. Of course, for any goals, you need a time framework. One, it should begin. One, it should end. This issue we have to negotiate, discuss. As you know, the Secretary General Ban Ki moon has proposed to have the energy goals, which would consist of three elements. Number one, by the year 2030, there should be the all countries, all the people should have full access to energy. Second, by 2030, there should be double of the renewable energy. By year 2030, there should be a double of energy efficiency. Of course, a lot of details do be, need to be worked out. I just gave you an example. Can we have goals, similar goals like this, to cover the seven plus priority areas? If members could agree, that would be huge success or progress. Because only with the goals, we can measure how what is status, how far we have gone, and how many distance we need more, more we need to travel. So this is a huge proposal on the table, sustainable development goals. Okay. Of course, for any goals, we have to need to work out the indicators, right? How to measure the progress. And those details, I don't think, we, I personally, I don't believe that we have time to work out, work them out. 
But if in Rio, the heads of state the government could agree that let's have the set of goals covering those priority areas with targets, with indicators, with method of measurement, you know, to be work out later on, that would be wonderful. Wonderful. Since there have been a lot of agreement or commitments, but once for some, I'm not, don't misunderstand me, you know, for few people, you know, they made commitments and then they forget it. They forget the implementation. So therefore, I personally, in my personal capacity, I would strongly, I would be very happy to see some kind of review or exchanges of views on the implementation of the goals. In the UN forum, the people called it, what is, turn it left, huh? okay, sorry. Also, I'm very talkative, they remind me time in Turkey. Now, something, you know, to measure, to exchange a view. The way. So, there is a, a kind of a, the, 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 the proposal to have some forum established so that we can review, you know, what we agreed in Rio regularly. So, those are the things you can imagine, you know, with this kind of very uh, prestigious observation. You know, I, I think you can understand the complexity of the issue, the task lying ahead of us. So, uh, but I'm confident because the excellent leadership, because the increased awareness of the importance of the issue, because of the participation of all stakeholders. I'm very happy in Brazil, you know, all the people are mobilized, right? Now, and of course, in addition to the outcome we are going to have, a lot of side events. We are going to have the nine major groups. I'm not going to tell them what they are. You know them very well. They are going to have, going to organize hundreds of side events and where they are going to adopt, I don't know how many, hopefully thousands of initiatives. And this will be part of the outcome or products of the Rio Pass 20. Rio Pass 20. I'm sorry to be talkative. Any other questions? Okay. Just next question, please. Uh, Mr. Shah, welcome to Rio and welcome to Brazil. My name is Vladimir. I work to the Brazilian Public Information System. Uh, I'm going to ask you two objective questions, okay? I just wrote down the questions because my English is not very good, okay? First question. Brazilian Congress is about to vote a new forest code like a new forest laws, okay? Many people say it will make the environmental laws weaker and the Brazilian forests may suffer more devastation. What the environmental community who you lead right now may say to the Brazilian congressmen about this new law? And the second question, do you think the conference may lead to a new multilateral environmental organization like the World Trade Organization? Thank you. What organization? WTO. WTO? No, no, it's a kind of big agency, UN agency. Okay. Well, forest. Forest. Brazil, we, everybody knows Amazon, forest, these lungs of the earth, of the world, right? But let me very, make it very clear according to the real principle. This forest belongs to Brazil. That's very clear. Of course, Brazil is a part of the world. So Brazil exercised the sovereignty ownership of the forest. Number one, sovereign right over their natural resources. As forest is big, one of the biggest, one of the biggest, of you have many, so many resources, forest. And then number two, how to use them? That is 
the decision of the sovereign government of Brazil. That should be also very clear. And thirdly, taking into account the fact that we are living in a same planet. When you use, exploit your resources like forest, they should take into account its impact on the environment. So here is that you have to utilize them, use them for the benefit, for the development for the, of the Brazil, but at the same time, you have to take into, our, into account the environment, environment first for Brazil and then also for the world. Here, that's why you know, we have very, a group of very clever people. They're called Sustainable Management of Forest. Which will certainly integrate the three. Economic development, social development, and environmental protection. Well, I'm not an expert on forest, but I, uh, all I know is that the Brazilian government has tried its level best and have been doing a good job. Of course, I know, I don't want, I'm not in a position to interfere in the internal affairs of yours, and on any issue, there are always divergent views. But whether in government or opposition, they all agree there should be sustainable management of the forest. How to do it, methodologies, that can be debated. How to better. I don't think there is any example, quote unquote example, on this subject, how to put the forest in the best use. We are all in the process of learning. Secondly, on the environment, of course, earlier I mentioned, you know, UNEP, United Nations the Environmental Organization, there are two proposals on that. One is, to there is agreement that first, the environment pillar should be strengthened. Particularly, the UNEP should be strengthened. There is agreement. Question is, how? There are on this how issue, there are two proposals. One is to strengthen in the UNEP by making it more representative, expanding the governing council, and to have all the full membership of the United Nations, and also to address the issue of the financial resources, and to strengthen its uh, science and technology kind of capacities, all those things, you know. Strengthening, there are proposals on this, and the other proposal, proposed by EU, supported by many, many is to elevate the, the UNAP, United Nations Environment Pro, uh, you know, Program, into the World Environmental Organization, or no, so United Nations Specialized Agency. Both proposals are on the table, and the negoti in depth negotiations are going on. But to agree on the second, then you have to, you know, at least be clear how this new agency is going to handle its relationship with existing institutions like three real conventions, which was born 20 years ago, like climate, fly, climate change convention, biodiversity, desertification, right, and many other conventions, how to handle relation, because different conventions, different membership and different rules. So this issue, I think, those proposals are on the table. So uh, that's why we have a lot of work to do. We have five more minutes, so we need a very short question and a very short answer, Mr. Shah. <laughs> that's very reasonable. So we will be will be oh, you uh, cadê o microfone aqui Gustavo uh, onde está ok sim ok yes May I? sim please please okay. go ahead um, how do you uh, sorry Kakiobo uh, I'm from Ufil a French website uh, in in uh, Europe Paris. Um, how do you intend to uh, deal with social, 
social organization worldwide that um, wants to make the summit fail because they disagree with the concept of green economy. You, you know well, what I meant. You know that most of social organizations in Europe are very against this concept. So how do you intend to convince them to make something constructive? Well, first... Good question. I don't know if I got your question correctly. As I said earlier, sustainable development has three pillars. Economic development, social development, and environment protection. To achieve sustained development, of course, government has a big role, very big role to play. But I don't believe that government can do it alone. Government can create policies, strategies, provide the, in, in the enabling environment, and this is the job of the government. Of course, government can also invest. It's a huge role. But no matter how powerful, how effective the government is, it cannot do the job alone. And that's why 20 years ago, our forefathers, they created a nine major groups. And you know that. Women, farmers, industry, science and technology community, you know, indigenous people. Like this, youth and children group, workers, so indigenous people. So, we need the private sector. Government and non-government or civil societies, they should work together. This is one I call a partnership for easier reference. While at the same time, governments, of course, they cannot do them alone. They, among the government, among the countries, developing developed countries. I think we strongly advocate for international partnership. Here I use the word partnership at the government level and also part between the government and non-government organizations, particularly nine major groups. And let me emphasize the importance of partnership between public and the private. So, Partnerships are also informed in this context, and a lot of social organizations have a huge role to play. Shout, speak out, talk to them, make sure the government will listen to you. Of course, you cannot dictate to them, right? But at least let them listen to you. I'm sure government will be happy to hear your views and accept what is uh, feasible and uh, useful. So, so, in response to your questions, let me emphasize social organizations have a very big role to play. And I've seen enormous enthusiasm have demonstrated on the part of the social organization in Brazil. Of course, there's another big organization called the parliamentarians. I'm going to talk to them. You know, parliamentarians, they make rules, make legislations, and they discipline the government, right? and they are very important. They are neither government nor non-government. I don't know what status should I give them, but all I know is that they are legislative bodies. They are very important because any policies, you know, proposal of government will need to be endorsed by them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Obrigado a todas e todos. A agenda está curta, então temos que ir. Qualquer uh, questão, problemas, etc., nós aqui uh, do UNIC, do Centro de Informação da ONU, estamos à disposição. E a agenda do secretário-geral secretário da Rio Mais 20, Shazukang, continua 
Eh, in Brasile, con, bon, aqui no Rio de Janeiro ele terá eh, encontros com o prefeito e o governador e na, em Brasília com vários ministros, o ministro das relações exteriores, eh, Patrioto, a ministra do, do meio ambiente, Isabela Teixeira, o presidente do Senado e... Bom, passo a palavra aqui para quem... Sabe. Também com o presidente das Comissões de Relações Exteriores do Senado, o senador Collor, das, do Meio Ambiente, Rodrigo Hollenberg, e também participará da abertura da, da próxima reunião da Comissão Nacional da Rio Mais 20, que vai ocorrer em Brasília, com a presença de vários ministros, eh, chefiada pelo ministro Patriota e pela ministra Bela Teixeira, representantes da sociedade civil, ju, a, o Judiciário e também o Congresso Nacional. Obrigado. Então, obrigada.